Hello and welcome to Web of Light. Here at Web of Light, we support, promote, invite, dance, sing, and occasionally have been known to do somersaults with people who are bringing a web of light or weaving a web of light in the world. People, companies, projects, nonprofits. If you're out there bringing light in the world, we want to know about you. We are, be, we are shooting here out of Hudson, New Hampshire, but I know we are carried from Vermont all the way over to California, and we have more people picking us up every week. If you have recently joined the Web of Light uh, TV audience, we don't always get notified. So please let me know at Dr. Kevin, D-R-K-E-V-I-N, at weboflight.com. Let me know that you are now one of our viewers, and I will happily acknowledge you and give you a great big Web of Light welcome as you have joined our viewers. So, the Web of Light is with Dr. Kevin and Angie. She's still gone. She's still gone. She's been gone for like four or five weeks now. Hmm. Well, so I guess it's just gonna be me and the guests today. Well, we've done this before, haven't we? She does her Mrs. Partridge, she wanders around, takes care of her kids, does all this emergency stuff, and then there's just good old dependable, boring, quiet, conservative state Dr. Kevin holding the fort. Oh, I'm sorry, but today we have a fabulous guest who's going to keep me um, on track and keep me energized and keep you energized as well. As always, we're going to start with a word of wisdom. Last uh, week, we actually, I shared a poem that was one of my aunt's poems. Uh, sometimes I share my poetry. Sometimes it's a quote from Ben Franklin or Mahatma Gandhi. Who knows? But today, this is today's quote. It's a poem that I wrote called Bohemian Traveler. I never mean to be away for as long as I am. I always want to stay and come back and do what I can. Then I get to my next where, and I want to stay to be with whoever is there, who makes me again not want to go away. Not every place I stop is a there, not every person with whom I stay a heart placed where, but that does not lessen the many for whom I care. My promises are always felt coming from the heart, and in my heart you are always held even when apart. Joyously melancholy, melancholy joy, that I cannot stay with you each and every day, but I must keep moving on or surely lose my way. I wrote that back, uh, I wrote that in England, when I was in England for four months, uh, not the summer that just passed, but the summer before that. And I hadn't been there for a while. And I was missing my friends in Phoenix, but I was loving my friends in England. And when I got back and I, you know, ended up doing all of that, falling madly in love, moving in, getting engaged, settling down stuff, I had many friends that I, I had said I was going to come and visit uh, as I had closed down my life in Phoenix and I was going to go hang out in Seattle, Washington and Portland, Oregon and LA and San Francisco and New Orleans and the list goes on. I had more invitations than I knew what to do with and yet I decided to be responsible. I wanted to try it on, see what it felt like, you know? You should always try something at least once. Uh, and uh, like I said, fall madly in love, get engaged, and now I'm busy planning a wedding. So, but that doesn't mean that all of those people, some of who watch my show in Portland and in LA and all over, that you're still not in my heart. And it's very tough, you know, we've created a global world. I have friends all over the world. I have people that mean a great deal to me. Even today, I miss my friends in England that I get to spend a whole summer, four months with, and I miss my friends in Phoenix in ways. And in other ways, they live on within me, and they will always live on through me. So for as long as I breathe, all of you will have breath, just like all that have come before me. So now I'm going to introduce you to today's guest. Today's guest is Cheryl Burns. Cheryl Burns started studying herbs in 2000. 
2009. She started with Herb, Herbie the Love Bug. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Herb. Yeah, no, that's Herb. No, that's Herbie. Sorry, uh, Herbs in 2009. She fell in love and hasn't stopped studying since. She has lived all over and recently, you see the all over part? Now you know why I picked Bohemian Traveler for this. Um, she's recently uh, opened Tangled Roots in Nashua, New Hampshire. She has come to, to grace us with her herbal wisdom. It is her dream that you enjoy reading, learning, and sharing the knowledge you learn with her here at Tangled Roots Herbal. It is her wish that one day that your path and her path will meet in one of her classes. You can go in and see Cheryl anytime you want. Uh, it's right on 93 and a half West Pearl Street in Nashua. She's closed Sundays and Mondays, but I believe she's open Tuesday through Saturday. She'll correct me if I'm wrong. I, I right. don't mind being wrong, so feel free. Uh, <laughs> um, but come and share this beautiful journey with her. You can find out more about her at Facebook, uh, Tangled Roots Herbal or tangledrootsherbal.com. Uh, and all of her stuff is underneath. Now, I've, I had exchanged emails with Cheryl before I actually turned my face to her. I shared emails with Cheryl. I went in, and Angie and I went in. Angie was supposed to be here, so this is somebody else she's let down. So we will beat her later. Uh, and we only had one conversation. I think it was a conversation maybe for a half an hour or stuff mm -hmm. like this. And yet, I decided in honor of her, I was going to wear today my repeat offenders shirt. Because I felt a kindred spirit. I felt somebody who was going to keep, out, keep on going, non-stoppingly, with great vim and vigor and enthusiasm, and repeatedly offend those people that want to put you in the box, that want to medicate the crap out of you, that want to put you into some place where they want you to be and is going to forever in a day fight the concept of being normal. So with that said, welcome Cheryl Burns and am I correct? Thank you. Yes, probably <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Am I, I making you want to be more of a rebel than you are? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. My, my parents would probably definitely agree with that. I, uh, I definitely, as a child, and probably to this day, uh, I, I, don't, I don't fit in a box, nor do I want to. Um, individuality is so important. Why, why do I need to fit into a box? I don't. No, no, not no. at all. So, and I mean, we talked about the fact that you had been quite the bohemian traveler yourself. Mm -hmm. So I thought you would appreciate that. Absolutely, I did notice that. And yes, I, uh, I'm a gypsy at heart. I uh, seem to move somewhere and experience all that I can. And then uh, it's like I'm off to somewhere else. Life leads me somewhere new. So, uh, but now, now that we have the shop, it seems that New Hampshire is going to get to keep me for some time. So. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because New Hampshire will keep you for some time, um, but you may also find that you get to places where you, you've brought in enough interesting and diverse and dependable people that you still get to go, go gypsy it. Yep. And, you know, bring back new things. That's what happened when I've done things like had healing centers and stuff like that is, you know, I find a balance between those that are just perfectly happy to stay where they are and those of us who live in the throes of wonderlust. <laughs> 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 well, that is definitely, definitely a dream of mine. I, I do love to travel and learn different cultures. And uh, so, yes, I think, I think that will be part of my, my soul journey. So what brought you, so first of all, I mean, I, I want to find out more about Tangled Roots Herbal mm -hmm. um, and things, but what brought you to Nashua? What I mean, brought that's me? a, it's an interesting, quirky place. You're not an originally a New England girl, are you? No, I'm not. I am a Southern girl. I was uh, raised in North Carolina, born in South Carolina, and uh, went to school, went to college there, and wanted out as soon as <laughs> I could <laughs> to see something new. Um, and so I moved to Colorado and spent some time out in Colorado. Um, moved from there to Georgia. And uh, I went through a divorce in Georgia and uh, had a friend who lived up here and we worked in the corporate world together. Um, we were in sales and uh, when it, it just felt like time to leave and she lived up here and I came for three months and uh, been here about 
six or seven years with a small stint in Connecticut in between there. So that's okay. it. I just packed up and came here. <laughs> <laughs> I, child, I hear you. I've been there, done that. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'll tell you when I get there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Forward my mail tip. Well, don't forward it anywhere. I'll let you know when we got an address. <laughs> um, so you came up because you had a friend here, mm -hmm. and I'm taking it, fell in love with the area to some extent. Yes. And now I've been here six or seven years mm -hmm. off and on. Okay. Yep. And uh, now, had you ever owned retail before? So I owned a small, uh, what I would call like a little hippie shop my uh, senior year of high school. Uh, my mother owned a, a large house, old home, and everyone rented out rooms. And so I guess I had it in me from the start um, in, in both the sectors of what retail I was doing and then um, just being a business owner in general. I loved it. Um, so yes, I had owned that before. I had also owned uh, an invitation company online for a small period of time. An invitation company? Yes. What did it invite you to do? <laughs> <laughs> so we sold a large selection of invitations. Uh, it's very popular down south um, to do invitations for just about everything. Bridal showers, birthday parties, you name it. So uh, I uh, kind of brought that up to this area, did it online, and uh, yeah, that was that. It, uh, it was good, but it wasn't my passion. And so... Uh, I stopped doing that, and I had found herbs somewhere in that time frame, and uh, really just fell in love. And that's sort of uh, the starter, I guess, to everything. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because our journey will put all sorts of what looks like wrong exits and detours in our life, and then at some point we go, oh. I did all of that for this one piece of information or <laughs> connection or this one opportunity, which now goes right there. <clears throat> Yay. Now I know why I had you. And you may come back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's life has an inv a way to do that. So let me see. Hung out, can't say I ever actually lived in North Carolina, but did live in South Carolina for a while, lived in Colorado for a while. Where else? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm mapping our parallels. <laughs> Connecticut in, for a Connecticut. short period of time. Yeah, no, never was a Connecticut boy. Yeah. What part of South Carolina were you, were you, did you live in? Greenville. Okay, okay. Yep. I actually, a couple of years ago, spoke, spoke at Clemson. I was a keynote there. Yeah, I spent some time in college at Clemson. I started out there. It uh, was uh, in my blood. I have a long history in my family of, Clemson graduates, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my ex was from Columbia, and we ended up housing there for a bit. Nice. So, uh, anyways, interesting town. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you went, and uh, you've created this life here now, mm -hmm. uh, and you like being a business owner, but this is your first brick, real, well, you said you had some brick and mortar with your mother's big house, but mm -hmm. you probably weren't like having to deal with paying the rent and the stuff like this. I did actually, my mother was persistent for me to, to learn all of those things, but it definitely wasn't to this scale. So this is the first time I've done something of this scale. Now I'm gonna, I, I'm going to, uh, the business has been, when did the business open? We opened in August. Okay. And I've been in the space, um, and now tell me, uh, there was some, some rumors that the MySpace might expand. Is that still looking like it might happen? Yes, that actually is going to happen. So we are looking at February 1st. Um, we're going to be moving next door, um, literally next door. It was the old Dan Weeks office, and it's uh, more space for us and it has a larger classroom. Our classrooms, our classes, I should say, have been very popular. And so we needed more space to be able to hold more people in the classes. So anybody that in less than a year can move up into a bigger space is doing something right. Thank you, I think so. I am a master at manifesting. When yeah. I finally decide that I wanna do something, I do it. And um, 
Spirit put this in front of me um, at a time in my life where I was taking a break, and um, I jumped. I, I, uh, I talked to my husband, and he was supportive, and I went for it. And I felt like there was such a need in this area um, for what we have. And as it turns out, that's how it's been going. So we are so grateful. Um, it's been an incredible ex short experience so far, but um, it's been Quite. wonderful. So now I take it that this is a new and improved version, not the husband you divorced? Yes, yes. <laughs> much, just, much. just because you, met, you, know, you were like, yeah. got <laughs> Very divorced. much so. I, I did meet the man of my dreams here. I think that was part of my soul's journey to get here. I think he was definitely my purpose here. Now, is he involved at all? Is he into this stuff? <laughs> As a matter of fact, he is. Um, he will be retiring from the military in March. He's got 26 years in. Um, but he has done pendulum work since as far back as he can remember. He started with a needle and thread. Doesn't know exactly where he picked it up, um, but he is amazing at it. Um, in fact, he's going to be teaching the class um, come January, so I'm really excited about that. You know, there's, there's this strong... The, there's a strong interweave, and I'm, I'm going to do something. It, it's one of my famous tricks. It's one of Dr. Kevin's famous tricks, which is I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth at the same time. Okay. That's why people think I should go into politics. Uh, <laughs> it's, it is so important in some ways to have a harmonious, harmonious band of spirituality in a relationship. Um, I'm... I, I'm guessing or whatever that that might not have been in your first relationship. Absolutely not in my past. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get into somebody and you realize that you're not editing. You're you're out and raw and it's all good. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, and here's the other side, I talk to people all the time about your spouse doesn't have to be into the same things as long as they are open and supportive to it. So I just want to put in that side of it because sometimes people come and say, oh, you know, my spouse is really good and they're really kind and they're really nice, but they're not spiritual, so I have to divorce them. I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm hearing some spiritual arrogance here. <laughs> to each in their own time. That's how I feel. We all are on this journey and we get where we get when we get there. So do you think he, besides teaching classes, will actually get more involved once he retires? I mean, do I do you... think so. Yeah. Okay. He likes being in there. So uh, he helps out, and uh, he says he's learning a lot from me. So that's, that's really exciting. And uh, we'll see. We'll see where the journey takes us. Uh, I'm open either way. If he wants to be a bigger part of it, then awesome. And if, if he wants to do something else that he feels drawn to do, then that works for me, too. So, yeah, well, it's, it's nice when it's not pressure, mm -hmm. when it's when, going back to one of your earlier businesses, when it's an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about herbs for a second. I, I've been playing with herbs since the late seventies. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly a newbie, mm -hmm. uh, but you came from a corporate background. Yes. You came from a more traditional religious background, I'm assuming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from mm -hmm. some of the comments that you're saying. Yep. Uh, which, it's very interesting. I spoke at an herbal, I've spoken at a few different herbal con, uh, um, uh, conferences and stuff like that um, about some of the work that I do with herbs and, and things like this uh, that were run by, and, and I don't say this with any belligerence or anything, but, but were run by born again Christians, mm -hmm. and all of their stuff was the herbal tied to the Bible. Did you come to herbs through the Bible, or did you come to herbs through another doorway? I did not come to herbs through the Bible. Um, I came to herbs, I think, as a child. I, my dad loves to garden. He was always outside, and I, I was always a child that liked to be outside. Um, and instead of being drawn to the flowers like my father was, I've, I found my path in the herbs and the healing aspect of plants. Um, later on in life, when I was living in Connecticut, there was a spiritual church. Um, and I think that is the, the big reason that I was drawn to Connecticut. 
Um, I started attending this church and I really just, I fell in love with spirituality and the openness and um, they taught some herb classes there. And that was really where I first started to learn about the herbs and learning them on a spiritual level as well. And um, just didn't stop. Once we moved here, I found other herbalists here. I attended herb stock um, and just took classes any chance that I, I had. And um, found a teacher that I, I really felt connected to who had an awesome program um, up in Amherst, Mass. And I drove back and forth and that's where I completed most of my studies. Which is interesting because we, we do have a couple of pretty renowned herbalists right in New Hampshire. Yes, we do. Maria Noel Groves has come a couple of times um, now to the shop to teach some herbal classes um, and do book signings. So, And she's located? She is located right outside of Manchester. She's in uh, Bear Creek uh, Park. Okay. It's called. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we also have, uh, there's Misty Meadows. Yes. And then there's the Mustard Seed. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, have you have you uh, done herbal powwows with any of, of them? Or I have haven't with those two, actually. I have been to Misty Meadows um, several times, and um, I haven't been to the Mustard Seed, but I hear really amazing things about it. So uh, hopefully when my husband retires and I get a little time out of the store, I'll go check it out. Yeah, well, absolutely. And if you happen to catch Salandrea there, make sure that you send my regards. I've... Uh, Salandre was who I started herbalism with in the early in the late 70s. Oh. Um, not as an official student. Mm -hmm. um, I used to mm -hmm. actually go in, into her, the little shop she had in downtown Portsmouth, her very first shop. She was in one shop for like 20 years in Portsmouth wow. as an herbalist and creating her own stuff and, and things like this. But in her very first shop, she had this little spiral staircase. And when, the, when she was first starting and it was slow and I had time, I'd go up the spiral staircase and I'd read poetry to her as she was doing stuff in the show. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Just friends. I mean, old friends. Old friends. <laughs> love Salandrea dearly. Um, and, uh, but definitely would be worth the trip to go up and, uh, um, and connect with her. That's what I hear. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what is it? Um, so you now do your own formulations, do you have your own herbal line, do you have, what are you doing with herbs at Tangled Roots? And I know Tangled Roots is a lot more than just herbs, mm -hmm. but it is Tangled Roots Herbal, so. Yeah, um, so I don't do my own line, um, and I don't do any cl clinical work at this time. Um, Perhaps that'll be something in the future that I do. I love to teach, and I'm really excited to start teaching uh, this month and, and through the rest of the year. Um, I am very much an intuitive herbalist, um, and I, I like to teach that way. I like to teach people that, you know, one herb, as you know, can do many different things for many different problems. Mm -hmm. Three herbs can do the same can, can treat one, one problem, but that one herb that might be good for you might not be a good fit for me, mm -hmm. even though we have the same symptom. Um, and so I really like to teach people how to connect with the plant, um, how, to, how to find out which one is gonna work the best for you. Um, and I think when I first started studying, I had a hard time with that because I, I just wanted to get the science, the science, the science down. And finally, my teacher said, you know, it's hard to teach someone the intuitive part. You know, you get that, you commune with the plants. And um, at that moment, it, w it was a turning point for me where I realized like, yes, this is a gift and this is the bridge between my spirituality and my love for herbs and helping people to heal. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting because definitely any and all work that I've done with herbs and I've been working as a medical intuitive for years, so I'll recommend herbs and homeopathics and aromatherapies and all sorts of different things when I do protocols. Kind of, you know, let's see what your body wants and now why don't you go play and see if it resonates to you. Because, you know, we cannot diagnose, right. we cannot prescribe. <laughs> Like I tell every person that sits in front of me, all my information is intuitive in nature, you know. Um, and, you know, and of course, as the, for entertainment purposes only, when you do intuitive work, 
So this is how you do this. Is so this is for entertainment purposes only, which means that when you get better and the doctor told you you were going to die, you get to laugh in their face. How entertaining <laughs> is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it's a wonderful thing. Um, it's been a blessing if anyone comes into the store and they're looking, you know, I will help to some degree formulate um, based on what, what they share with me. Um, I have a lot of people coming in with the depression and anxiety as the world is shifting and um, I've introduced flower essences, which are something that most people who walk into my shop are not familiar with. Um, and it's excellent for the emotional level. Yep. Um, I searched high and low, spent many hours looking for a company that would make tinctures alcohol free, but that would still be just as effective as the ones with alcohol, mm -hmm. and the same for the flower essences. And I was fortunate enough to find two companies that have an excellent product that my customers have been very happy with. Um, and the reason I did that is recovery is very important to my husband and I. And it's something that in this new year is a big goal of ours for 2017, is to put together a program um, that's in addition to the programs that are already out there, but has a little more of a spiritual base to it along with the herbs. Um, and a place that people can find their tribe and, and feel good about themselves. And um, I'm really looking forward to marrying the two together in this year. Well, we should talk. <laughs> Because I've, I've uh, spoken at uh, like Half Moon Sober Fest and places like that uh, with, uh, and dealing with the people in the recovery thing. And I'm, I've been a, I am a very vocal, um, uh, what is it, uh, against, I guess. The word is escaping me that I want to use. But that I really feel like that there is a time and a bandwidth for a 12-step program, mm -hmm. and then there's a point where you have to get to the 13-step and fly. Yep. And I don't think that there's enough identifying where the addictions come from sometimes. Mm -hmm. So as I will work with it and <clears throat> may do herbal support, and that's so important that you're supporting your body through not just whatever the addiction is, but the damage that was done that needs to be recovered. Absolutely. Process. So you can fly, and I, I think that's so important, and that's really what we're looking to do, is what do you do after those 12 steps? How do you take that next part of your life and, and do what you've always loved? How do you find that path that you're meant to be on after you've gone through such a challenging time? Yep. And, um, we're really, we're just really excited about it, and it seems that as I've started to put it out there, you know, it just, the divine timing happens. People walk into the store who are a part of, you know, a recovery program, and, and it's just meeting the right people at the right time to get it rolling, and uh, one of the big things we're doing is, um, if anyone has decks of cards, um, oracle cards, affirmation cards that they have, are, that they don't, want any longer, that have already served the purpose for them and are ready to be passed on to someone else. We are collecting them at the store so that we can donate them to recovery centers. Um, one of the big things I like to do every morning is I shuffle my deck and I ask the divine, what do I need to learn today? What do I need to focus on today? And it just gives a nice start, nice positive start to the day of where it's going to go. And, and um, I think that that would be... Um, really beneficial to those in recovery who might not be able to buy their own deck. And, there, and there's something beautiful in someone sharing that with another person. Well, and as I know, because I've tagged you and you've commented or liked before, you get my morning coffee, which yes. does just that to try to give, uh, you know, what's the energy for the day? What's the message? What today was the number eight was my morning muse, which is the number that represents the spirituality of business and the business of spirituality. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. I like the divine timing, that's for sure. So um, recovery, you know, and again, it's that, that whole, oftentimes recovery programs just switch the addiction. We're going we're gonna to take it from alcohol to, to sugar and nicotine and caffeine, but we're, we're not dealing with 
what's the, what was the original wound? What was the original pain? What's the spiritual? What's the emotional? What's the mental? What are the experiences? What did I learn? And, and is it a physiologically addictive or, you know, is it a habitually addictive? Right. Very different. Mm -hmm. It is. So do you see yourself coming up with something that is complementary or something that is more next generation? You know, I, it could be a little both. I think to start with, it's going to be something that's complementary. Um, I want this to be about those that are in recovery and what they're looking for. So I want to provide a safe place um, with what we do spiritually, which is whatever works for you, really. Yep. Here's all the different options that you have. You know, what, what helps you get through the day? Um, what helps me might be different for what helps you, for what helps my husband. And really just having a community, a tribe that you can share things back and forth with. Um, you know, learning the way that you can meditate best. Not everybody meditates the same way. And maybe that's starting out with three, a three minute music, if you're a music person. Um, so just using all the different tools, talking about what our soul plan is. Um, our medium, Lori, is going to be a part of the program and helping people understand maybe what their past lives were um, that could affect their soul journey and where they're at, you know, why they went through so many challenges in their life um, to get where they are, and what are, the, what are the golden nuggets in those challenges that we might not see that kind of led us down that path of addiction. Um, positive self-talk not beating ourselves up. That's a huge one. Um, so that will definitely be a part of the program. So I think it will be something that can be in conjunction with the 12-step program, but also something that can be after, after that part. You know, once you've, once 13 you... 13 to 24? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, well, so, so what's it going to take for me to, uh, entice you and your husband to come to one of our monthly drumming circles. You mentioned music and... Oh, we oh. would love that. We would love that. We uh, recently just had a um, friend of mine who's a shaman and they, they're actually in uh, South Dakota right now with all that's going on there. And um, they travel around in an RV. They live in an RV, which I love. And uh, they came and taught a drum birthing class and everyone got to make their own Native American uh, frame drum and it was the history. And so anyhow, it's my first drum I've ever made myself and I chose Buffalo uh, as my hide. And it's only been brought out once other than at the house. And so I would love to bring it out and uh, use it again. Well, we, you know, uh, I don't have the date, but I will make sure that I hook you up. We have a meetup group and a Facebook group called Gathering in Spirit. And in the greater Nashua area once a month, I mean, we skipped December because it's crazy. The crazy. It was, the, <laughs> it was cray cray. Uh, um, actually, I preach. Let's not do cray for the holidays. I know. Yeah, I'd rather do like you know etouffee with crayfish. Why do cray cray? <laughs> let's do chill. Yeah, instead. let's do chill. <laughs> At the very least, chilly. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, so starting in January, we'll be starting up the monthly drumming circle again. Wow, and, that would be great. We would yeah, that. yeah. So, um, I don't know how we, we find different places. We travel around and do it. Just some of we were doing it at the labyrinth outside and we did it at the parks so and we did it at the waterfalls. Now we're indoors. Um, when you get your new space, if, if it's big enough at some point for us to do one of the, one of their, you know, um, one of the drumming circles there would, you know, show up there and do it. That'd so, be fantastic. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we get five or six people. Sometimes we get 25 people. Right. You yep. never know. It's yep. all people's schedules and what's going on. So we are, we are offering another of the drum making class as well for anybody who's interested in learning more. They can find that information on our website. Um, we're still trying to come up with a date, but that will be in March. So, in March. um, so you are doing the the um, herbal stuff. Yep. Now you strike me as somebody that is a multitasker extraordinaire, so to speak. <laughs> yes, I am. So, do you think that uh, what do you see 
besides the path and herbs as being your next unfolding path? Healing, okay. doing more work in connecting with plant spirit um, and incorporating that into to helping people heal. And I don't know exactly what that looks like yet. Um, and I think it will come when it comes. And so I'm not on this need to know right now. I'm sort of being in the space that I am in and being grateful, um, connecting with my customers that come in and being present with them. And I think when that next step shows itself, I'll be ready for it. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I noticed because we just showed up. We, <laughs> we were, uh, Angie and I were jumping around talking to different people and you're going to be at the Web of Light. We are. Uh, Earth Day weekend. Yes. Expo, um, April 22nd, 23rd at the Courtyard Marriott. Uh, in Nashua uh, and we are actually going to well we have a, a couple of mediums flying in from Dublin that are doing a, um, uh, a mediumship circle at Saturday night but after that we're doing a drumming circle ah fun so like people don't want to come to the gallery uh, the gallery stuff it's gonna be like 6 30 to 8 30 or whatever and then I think nine o'clock like 9 to 11 and they have a fire pit there so I don't know, it depends on how many people, whether we'll do it inside or outside, but they've already given us permission. So yes, that Saturday night, we're going to be doing a drumming circle. I will bring my drum. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so with this unfolding and the doing of healing, and you know, many people are where you are right now. And I can't tell you, and with my clients and the readings I've done and stuff like that, I get spring it's unfolding in the spring mm -hmm. it's unfolding in the spring you're just collecting you're just collecting i've said that so many times to so many different people it's not and it's just because this is just whether it's astrologically energetically spirit the human race i mean there's a whole all sorts of different things but it seems as if we're going to watch a lot of busting out energy so it'll be interesting to see where your energy busts out mm -hmm. having that patience is not always easy though it's not no it takes practice for sure. Some days I, I do it better than others. So it's definitely been a long journey for me in working to slow down and not need a list of a million things or accomplish everything or to just sit in this space of enough, um, which happens to be we chose a book for our book club in February that's, that's going to be titled Enough. We're enough. You're enough. Our finances are enough. Our living space is enough. Everything is just enough, and that's good. Um, so, how does your book club work? Do people can do, do? Is it people just got to gather together one night and talk about that one particular book, or does it have several like? Describe. Yeah. So, our book club works like <laughs> this. Um, you can sign. We ask that you. Uh, it's free. Um, the only cost is the book. Um, I try to choose authors that are local. Um, so for January, we're reading Essence by uh, April Adams, who's out of Manchester. Um, and what we are doing is you can pick up your book at the store um, or pre-order it and pay online. And then we just meet at the end of the month. April will actually be joining us February 2nd for the book discussion. Um, and we'll do a Q&A. Uh, so everybody can even ask the author. Uh, if they'd like, if they have a specific question about the book or about what they read or how it applies to their life. Um, so. Well, we'll have to talk. I've, I'm, I, as, as I know you're, you're aware of, I have lots of books out, so. There you go, <laughs> we will get you in there. <laughs> definitely, uh, yeah, definitely. For some reason, I think about the Combing the Mirror book, Combing the Mirror and Other Steps in Your Spiritual Path. I like that. Yeah, I mean, every chapter is only three to five pages, and Perfect. then comes with a homework assignment, so you can apply it in your life. So it's actually can be turned into a study group where you get together and go through chapter by chapter as a support to do the homework and then share and do stuff like this. It doesn't need to be teacher driven. I mean, I do a combing the mirror work weekend for mm -hmm. people that want to have more in depth, but you can go through the whole thing with just a study group that just shares, well, this is what I got from that homework assignment, that's what I got that from. And the, it takes you from 
life between lives to birth to discovering your soul's purpose all the way through to uh, stuff like reincarnation and how to develop your psychic abilities. We will definitely have to talk then because yeah. that sounds like a perfect fit for what we're doing. What are other, so tell me some of the other things and before you, actually before you do that, mm -hmm. where um, do you think there is a rise in spirituality? Are there, are there more people seeking answers now? I definitely think there are more people seeking answers now. Um, we call them seekers, uh, and they're the people that just happen to wander into the store, you know, and they say, wow, I, I didn't even know you were here. I was just, I was just walking by and, and something stood out and, um, and, they, and they end up there. And they're, it's such a relaxing, comfortable, peaceful space to be in. And um, you see them go from the stress of the world into the shop till they get about halfway through and then you just see them like relax, fall into a relaxed state of, of peace and happiness. Um, and we see it every day. And they're like, I don't know how I ended up here, but I needed to be here. And I'm so glad I found you. And uh, that has been the biggest blessing for me is seeing people wake up, seeing people want to learn more, whether you're talking about herbs in the body or spirituality, because it's really, to me, goes so hand in hand. It's taking care of ourselves. And that's really what, what our goal is, especially in January and February is our theme, is self-care and self-love. Because that's first and foremost. And we get so busy, we forget that. Yeah. You know, and people are seeking that. They're waking up. Well, I think that people are, are waking up to the fact that they're not very loving to themselves. And that in some cases, they don't even know what being loving to themselves looks like. Yeah. It's hard to be loving to something that you loathe. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be loving to something that you are struggling with self-esteem and self-worth issues. Uh, and, you know, I... I preach this before on this show and I'll preach it again, which is we've been getting set up since the 1950s by Madison Avenue to not like ourselves because that's how they sell those products. Mm -hmm. If they convince you that you're too short, too tall, too fat, too thin, too whatever, or not enough of not something, enough. <laughs> then you're going to buy from the ads. And then when you buy from the ads and, you know, and, and it, the, public media of all sorts and Hollywood, and they're all thick as thieves to make us feel inadequate. And so, and people are, people are sick and tired of not liking themselves. Yep. <clears throat> and so many of their, so many of their idols are false gods. Even their gods are false gods. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's a sense of being lost. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sense of being lost. Where am I going? Why am I here? What do I want for myself now? You know, really starting to question. Yeah. I always had to tell people, if your God doesn't support you, love you, celebrate you, make you feel good about yourself and make you want to go out there and do good in the world, you need to fire that God and find <laughs> another one. There are plenty out there. They all want you. They're recruiting all the time. Yep. But get rid of the hateful God. Get rid of the judgmental God. Get rid of, you know, the self-loathing God. The not good enough God that, you know, that's so yesterday. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> what religion did you grow up with? I grew up with Episcopalian. We were Episcopalians. Episcopalians. So almost like Catholics, but not as strict. Um, and it's funny, then I, I ended up being Jewish, becoming Jewish, spending some time in that. And so it's almost like I've just worked my way back. Yeah. Until I found what was like, oh, now this is what makes sense to me. Now, what would you classify yourself today? Jewish? No, spiritual. Just spiritual. Just spiritual. Yeah. There's something out there bigger than me. I don't know what it is, but it is. And I know that. I know it is. Wow. And, and it works. And that's all I need to know. I hate to state the obvious, but honey, you're no bigger than a peanut. There's a lot of things out there bigger than you. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> all those that are supporting and working with me, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. My, um, I, back to when I was in Columbia, South Carolina, my uh, in-laws 
uh, and, and while well, my ex was raised, but was no longer active. But in laws of like generations, original pew on the original um, church, Episcopalian church in Columbia, South Carolina, front pew named after them family. Yep. And it was my mother in law who I loved. I adored this woman. She's passed on now. She was so fun. But she was the one that always said, you know, that uh, every time that three or, uh, three or more gather in his name, there'll always be a fifth which is why they call them Wiscopalians. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I said, that's what I, when you said Episcopalian, I actually said Wiscopalian. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So give me some ideas of some of the things that somebody would experience in classes, specifically in classes. I mean, I know you've got sure. books there and you've got mm -hmm. herbs and there's some services that you offer there. Mm -hmm. uh, and people want to stop in and support a local Nashua business. Uh, even if you just stop in and say, hey, I saw <laughs> you, bless your heart, on the web line. I will respond appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty uh, naturally, actually. <laughs> Yeah, let me um, invite you to the back room. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, in our classes, um, like I said, January and February are going to be a lot about self-care and self-love. Um, I will be teaching classes on um, combating winter blues naturally, something that I think we all experience here in New England. It's, mm -hmm. it's a challenge um, come February and March when we just are so ready for summer and winter seems like it's lasted years. Um, so I'll be teaching a class on that. Um, I'll be teaching a basic aromatherapy class, um, and I will also be teaching a class on herbal skin care and the importance of it during the winter months. Um, like I said, my husband's teaching a pendulum class. Um, we have some classes on, um, it's called Alter Your Space, and it's creating sacred space in your home. Um, we're going to do some full moon and some new moon workshops. Um, and April Adams will be coming in to do her class um, for the new year along with New Year's resolutions and it's called um, Kick Self-Sabotaging Habits um, and so she'll be working with uh, why we don't follow through on our New Year's resolutions. Um, so <laughs> that'll be really exciting. Um, so that's, that's a bit of the classes we have. We also have a really exciting program coming out that Lori Haynes is going to be uh, putting together and it is for children and their parents, children who have um, extrasensory. Um, so being labeled as ADHD, being labeled as autistic. Um, and she's gonna be working with this parent, the parents and the children to try and explain to them that they are vibrating at a much higher level than what we've all been able to catch up to on earth. And that they have special gifts and special talents and really working with them and having them, the children and the parents find other parents or other children who are like them and teaching them spirituality and why they are the way they are and that you know they're here to teach us something really important if we listen. And we're really excited about that and, and we've had really great feedback already in parents that are really excited to come and see how that works out. And, uh, so that's, that's a little of what we have going on, a little of a lot. Excellent, excellent, you know, because uh, I have all the managing the gift stuff out. You and I talked about it when I was at the store, I believe. Yes. Looking at ADD as part of the evolutionary process, broadening the bandwidth of humanity. Yeah. Um, and, it's, it, and it's so needed. I'm so glad, um, I'm so glad to see even moving some more into the mainstream catching up with the stuff I was saying back in the 90s. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um, so th I've watched lots of ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. I, I start my 27th year full time in the spiritual community uh, in January, February. I have seen um, a number of different stores open, mm -hmm. plateau, and close. In Nashua. Yep. Um, ultimately, what do you see your goal? And how are you going to uh, beat that cycle? Because I've seen the stores that beat it, and I see the stores that haven't. 
how are you going to beat the cycle of everything goes in waves? Yeah. People get really spiritual. People get really frightened. Then people get really sedentary. Then people get really, ah, it's kind of okay. And then they fall back in and, you know, and then people get threatened. Fear. Fear is a big one. Fear. Um, you know, where is I, Tangled Roots going and how are you going to get it there? Where is it going? I mean, in big picture <laughs> that I think I would like to do is um, I, would I would like to franchise eventually. I mean, you've traveled, you know, you never know what you're going to walk into in a spiritual or metaphysical shop. Um, very rarely do you see, I mean, they're becoming more popular now, but rarely have we seen this, the herbal health side paired with the metaphysical side in one store. So I think that's something that makes us a little bit different. Um, and I think getting out and working with the community and seeing success stories, I love having people come in and share with me their shift, their change, or, you know, what happened after taking a class or just coming in and, and providing a space, holding a space for people after work. I have people come after work. I have people come on their lunch break to just chill, literally, to just walk around the store, to feel the energy and, and reshift themselves for the rest of their day. And I think providing that community, reaching out to the community, is going to be is going to be what makes it stick the the places that i've seen that have made it 15 years or more some some 30 years or more um you're 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 definitely speaking about the stuff i've seen which is that blend of that they don't just hyper focus on spirit and ignore the body, body, ignore the spirit. They deal with the, the, the mental and the emotional. They, they're dealing with all of the areas. But that building community is very, very much it. Um, you know, I look at, and we mentioned it at the beginning of the show, the mustard seed. I mean, it was in downtown Portsmouth for over 20 years, and now it's still existing somewhere else. It just, you know, downtown Portsmouth just became ridiculous and drove out, drove out most of the local business owners. Um, but when you talk about people that have been around 20 or 25 years and have stayed successfully in business, there's only a hand, a hand of them. I don't know any place in Manchester that has that length of time, um, nor in um, Concord had one that was close. And sometimes it's the owners that burn out. Sometimes mm -hmm. the owners can't hold the cycle because they don't have the foundation in place. Right. That's unfortunate because yeah. it's, it's something that's so needed. And I think when I feel worn down, I mean, I don't think any business owner doesn't at some point feel tired. You know, <laughs> am, I, am I on the right path? No, I, I know I am. I trust. Um, but it's the, again, I go back to the people that come in and, and the things they, they share with me, it, it heals me every day. And, um, I think that's something that I choose to hang on to all the time. And I, I choose to do that through the ups and downs and to have the faith and to trust that what I'm doing is helping others. And that's where my focus is. Well, I look forward to dancing at your 20th, your 20th anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Because I look forward to dancing anywhere, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl Burns, who is the um, owner, founder of Tangled Roots, uh, Tangle Root Herbal. Uh, you have all of her contact information at the end of the show and underneath her as she's been talking. Uh, you can go in and say hello to Cheryl at 93 and a half West Pearl Street in Nashua, New Hampshire. You can also stop by and meet Cheryl at the Web of Light Expo. Yes. April 22nd, 23rd at the Courtyard Marriott here in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, you know, just go hang out. Yeah. She's happy to have you come in and hang out and pick her brain and suck up some of those good energies and just be like, ah, hey, it's better than a glass of wine, costs less. No physical, and I can always get my glass of wine afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, God gave us grapes. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Thank you for being on the show, Cheryl. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very grateful.
So at our last show, I invited you not to make the same mistake over and over and over again of a long laundry list of resolutions, to simply find out who you are, be that person, love that person, and bring that person to the world, and everything else would take care of itself. Did you listen, or are you just checking off the ones that are gonna go on next year's list? Because they've already gone by the wayside. Namaste.